This is Technomancer for zero point fuel. I've been running some experiments on lithium polymer and lithium ion batteries. It is possible to charge them. They are difficult to charge and you can damage them or damage your charger because of this little circuit here. This circuit is actually inside of the battery. Now this circuit controls the charge and if you over charge the battery if you run over a couple volts this circuit is going to shut the battery off you, you have an open circuit on your output and basically going to mess up your chips depends on how many winds you got actually if you're running 75 feet like i am on this one you're probably going to damage it if you have more like a bedini where you've got 300 feet or so it's going to act like a capacitor and probably not going to damage your chip now i have an old phone here this is probably five or six years old you can tell it's a, it's a dated phone here you can tell by the charge here i'm sorry i'm trying to cover up logos can't be showing logos not a good thing you get in trouble that little one line on the battery there this phone wouldn't even stay on so i finally got it to take a pulse charge and stay on and not shut off this phone will not charge on the conventional charger that came with the phone but i'm able to charge it using a pulse charger basically that transformer back there running 24 volts that i use to charge my drill batteries and stuff that's way too much voltage to charge this phone this phone battery as you can see most of these batteries i blacked out the the names so 3.7 3.5 that's it that's all it can and you can't really go too much above that or the circuit that's inside the battery is going to open and fry your chip so the trick is to charge it at a lot lower voltage uh, what I'm using right now is RC car batteries they're rated at 9.6 I'm hooking a bunch of them together and that's a low enough voltage that will allow me to charge this battery and what I did here is I built a small little device to put the battery in and you can see these little contacts right here how small they are that's what has to come in contact with the battery and there's not much there and I tried a couple different ways but this worked they're part of a, uh, a switch basically a mechanical switch these were all bolted through those holes in, in a row and when you insert like a quarter inch jack they close the circuit like in a telephone exchange an old 1940s telephone exchange so uh, they work real well they're they're coated they're copper and they I can solder to them real well they're they're pretty slick little things they are useful for a lot of stuff but basically they have a little hook where they actually are connected they use that to connect the wire and what I did is I bent that little tab over and then bent that in an angle like you can see there to come in contact with uh, the battery okay I inserted the battery you can see how that works and um, we're gonna try to charge it here actually we're not gonna try we're gonna charge it you have to remember that when you're charging this battery if you overheat this battery because of the lithium in it it can expand and crack when it cracks and cools off it draws in air with moisture it's going to explode it's going to burn because lithium if it's exposed to moisture will ignite instantly just keep that in mind i monitor the temperature on this and i'm running it at such a slow speed that the battery's not even getting warm so uh let's give this a shot okay we've got this hooked up and this is my power source which is running around into the input which is this is my normal one so this is the 9.6 volts going into the motor and that is the out and we have a meter 3.67 see what happens Okay, so you can see it's taking a charge, and this is 
really running slow. It's been a half an hour. The battery's been charging for a half an hour. Uh, now remember, this is a pulse equivalent of a trickle charge. So unlike the NICADs that we can charge in 15 minutes, um, we're dumping very little energy into this battery. Um, the battery is um, still cold. There is no increase in temperature. Voltage to the motor. We're still at 3.88. Um, so the operational range of these batteries, they're all in parallel here, uh, connected with these uh, ends of the 9 volts that I took off. And um, this, so they're all in parallel. So basically that's just going to increase my amperage. But we're sitting at 9.6 on the input. And we're, the battery is not in the slightest bit warm. And we're going to just let it charge. Yeah, I put the battery in it and 48 minutes it it's sitting at about a half a charge. We're sitting at 3.91. The battery's still taking the charge so I'm going to leave it the way it is. That drop, number drops down to 7. I'll probably have to recharge these batteries here. Let me take this off. My batteries went dead. These batteries right here and uh, I had to charge them up so as you can see now the range has increased and drop it down and it's it's not going to operate in the same range uh, the battery had a, a rest time so it's not going to be warm I might have to do this whole procedure using a constant voltage supply Battery's charged about an hour and 10 minutes to this point. And now I recharged my source batteries. And uh, we're going to let it go and see what happens. I've been working and trying to keep track of this. The battery is still completely cold, so it's not heating up. And let's see. So it's been charging for about an hour and a half. It's reached 4.03 volts and it's rated at 3.7. So that's about 300 milliamps over what the battery's rated at. And that seems to not affect the battery. It's not heating up. It's been charging about two and a half hours, a little over two and a half hours. Uh, 4.06, the motor's about to stop. And I'm not going to charge the batteries up and try it again because uh, it's got to be almost completely charged. And I don't want to damage the battery. I want to see, I want to be able to load test it. So what I'm going to do is when it stops this time, I'm going to put the battery in the phone and try using the phone for a little while to see how well it held that charge and uh, that should tell me a little bit about how how well you can pulse charge uh, a lithium ion battery I'm actually thinking of building a small circuit and trying to tune the amount of amperage flowing into the battery because uh, the battery itself should be able to quick charge but there are limitations when you're quick charging a battery uh, you don't want it to any of that charge to turn into heat so I'll have to do some little experiments on the side here and build a small circuit to do that uh, but the battery itself right now is completely cold this hasn't affected the battery at all I haven't let it heat up I've been that's why it's taking so long to charge it I don't want to over charge it and uh, you know, I didn't even think I could get up to 4 volts without that little circuit stopping me. But obviously, this battery, this brand of battery, uh, that circuit's a little more forgiving. So, 4.06 volts. This is about to stop. When it stops, I'll put the battery in there and I'll show you where the, where the charge is. It fully charged the battery. So... I was able to pulse charge a lithium-ion battery 
no damage to the battery the battery is fully charged it's operating the phone just fine the stand voltage was about four volts so it is a little over but uh, you know you probably get a voltage drop as soon as it starts pulling voltage on the battery but there you go you can pulse charge a lithium-ion battery